Yeah, so to understand what's going on here, so let me first introduce myself. I'm Martin Lingstyle, very hard to pronounce name, but it's a very important name to me. Um, I'm a Microsoft 365 architect in the Netherlands and also an MVP in the development category. And I was recently uh, reading this blog post of a colleague, uh, not a colleague, direct colleague, but a colleague MVP, Joanne Klein, about retention and how auto-applying labels uh, have certain consequences uh, when using uh, retention controls in SharePoint. So um, I was thinking about how, how if, if, if I could make a, uh, a control that could make that uh, easier, that could make the life of a uh, record manager or information professional uh, easier in terms of cleaning labels, clearing labels from a lot of items, toggling records to be uh, locked or unlocked, things like that. And to know what we're talking about here, and maybe it's a it's handy to 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 uh, rewind a bit, to go back a bit, and to see what's what actually are we talking about? What 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 are labels, for example? Let's let's go back and take so. Um, Labels in my eyes uh, are like uh, pieces of metadata that are used to classify content with the intention of enforcing certain behavior. So a lot of people know, uh, for example, uh, uh, sensitivity labels, uh, but retention labels are also very important. And both are actually part of the Microsoft Purview offering that Microsoft has. And Microsoft Purview is the, the big tool that's used to, to apply this behavior, this security and compliance behavior across uh, uh, the scope of your entire Microsoft 365 tenant. So you can use them, uh, sensitivity labels, you can use retention labels to apply to files in SharePoint, files in OneDrive, transactions in Copilot, chats in Teams, emails in Exchange, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, Microsoft Purview does it all and applies that this be behavior across the board. So this is really a uh, powerful and very interesting uh, thing. So um, so what what types of label do we, labels do we have? Well. It, Two or three, depending how you look at it. The Purview dashboard kind of leads you to think that there are three types of labels. There's sensitivity labels, of course, uh, and retention labels in two flavors. But I personally say that there's really just two, but with differences in how retention is enforced. So retention labels, uh, which is mainly my focus today, of course, uh, retention labels as a part of the data lifecycle management uh, concept is more about classifying labels to make it clear how the end of the document lifecycle will look for label data. So in short, it's about simply like uh, automatically deleting data after X years uh, or marking documents to make sure it's clear that you want to keep them around. Um, so it's about data lifecycle management, about where does the data go uh, after X years. Uh, but it's not really, there's not really a behavior enforced when a document is uh, labeled. So during the retention term, you can still edit, update, or uh, delete a document, uh, for example. So retention labels as part of record management, that's just basically the same labels, but now they come with extra controls to be able to force behavior during the retention period. So we declare content as a record, meaning that that content should and uh, cannot be deleted during X years. And after these years have passed, we can have it automatically deleted, or maybe uh, we want to have a disposition review uh, for using uh, for the, the certain record managers or arch archival per people will look at the data if it can be really deleted. And they can say yes, delete it, and then the content is deleted. So this is basically the two big, um, the two big types of labels that we have. So retention labels and sensitivity, and um, a lot of it is really um, uh, quite similar. So if you look at the purview menu, for example, you see that all these labels actually have things like policies with which you can publish uh, these labels. They all have classifiers, which means that there's some automation for auto-labeling content based on the content of the content. I love that wordplay there. And there's data explorers and content explorers making it easy to see what data has been labeled. Um, so there's differences as well, but there's, uh, there's also a, a real a lot of similarities in, in, in how these things work behind the scenes. Of course, they do very different things, right? So information protection labels, so sensitivity labels do really different things from retention labels, but the way in which they uh, are applied or in, uh, and how it looks in purview is really a lot of, a lot of, a lot similar. So um, 
let me see. Uh, so about applying these labels, well, there's, uh, how can you do that? Well, there's a couple of ways to do that, of course. Uh, you can do it manually, of course. Uh, and Microsoft has delivered these uh, couple of drop downs. For example, this is one in SharePoint. So if you've got a, uh, if you've selected a document, you can select a sensitivity label or retention label to apply to the content. Um, and you can, for retention labels, you can you can uh, you can really publish labels to the to sites. So, for example, you can make sure that for a set of HR sites, uh, specific labels can be selected. For example, labels that matter to uh, people in HR who work with personnel information. Well, you publish a different set of labels to sites around financial uh, situations. You know. Uh, uh, retention labels that would be relevant there. Uh, and this is, of course, a very, very easy way. It's, it's basically still a, a piece of metadata that you can select. Um, but labeling manu manually is, of course, also a bore. Like people generally don't know what retention terms should be applied to the content they, they've created. They, they mostly don't know, at least in, in, in my environment, they don't. So they would need to contact the uh, archival people and you know people in their company who work with archives to know uh, how long this data should be uh, retained and what 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 the rules are around uh, keeping keeping files and archiving files. So ma labeling manually is difficult difficult, and this is why Microsoft has also uh, um, delivered some uh, automatic labeling policy. So. Uh, this means for retention labels, this means that you can create uh, a label that automatically applies to content based on certain pieces of metadata, which is awesome. Uh, uh, and of course, you can also build your own automation. So if you if you don't, if you're not uh, auto apply labels by Microsoft, they also have some drawbacks. And if those drawbacks matter for you, you can also build some custom automation and apply labels in your own way. Uh, the problem with automatic labeling, though, is if you and this is the reason, now I'm coming back to why I built this web part. Uh, uh, if you apply labels automatically, they won't be, you won't be able to select them as a user, which means that you also, as a, a site owner, for example, or a archiving professional, you won't be able to clear labels as well or switch them. So as soon as this automatic proce process has run, you won't be able to do anything about the uh, retention label because, well, as you can see, the dropdown is not available because the retention labels have not been published to these sites in, in a way uh, for manual labeling. They have just been uh, out applied to the content. So how to go about it? How, to, uh, how, how can you make it possible for people to clear labels or to work with records in this way? For example, um, a lot of these files that you can see in the screenshot are record type, are labeled with a record type label meaning they are locked. And record type labels can also be unlocked. So if you want to work with it or make a new version of the record and you want to add some specific important information, you can unlock the record, change the file and relock it. But also uh, those, those features are also not available now because, well, the dropdown isn't available because the label has been applied automatically. So we need something, we need a way to make this easier. And this is where I uh, created an SPFX extension to, uh, to do that. An SPFX extension that makes it easy to view retention settings. So what's actually going on in this library, what labels have, or what files have been labeled, what are the settings for those labels, and also to be able to um, do some bulk actions like clearing labels or uh, locking or unlocking. So I would like to show you uh, in the demo Let me see. OK, so uh, this is my SharePoint environment. As you can see, I have a library. And in this library, I have a lot of files. And all these files have been labeled. So a couple have been labeled with a record retention label. So this is uh, uh, one of the two types of retention labels that I named earlier. And some of these have been labeled with a regular data lifecycle management label. Those are these ones with a very descriptive name, of course, as you can see. Um, this one is slightly more descriptive. Uh, apparently, these uh, files labeled with this retention label will be retained for 10 years. And this will just 
I don't even know what I configure in terms of retention term. Um, but the, the, the point is that they're different. As you can see, um, SharePoint has added a lock, a slight lock here. You can see it uh, here, which means that this document is locked. It's locked with a record type label. So uh, how does my extension work? Well, it's a list view command set extension, which you can trigger by clicking a button. So, and this is, as you can see, I haven't selected a document right now. I can select the document and execute it on this one file. So now I would be able to view the retention settings for this one file. I can also select a set of files, or I can just not select anything at all and just open it. And if I click the button, the, uh, a dialog will open, which will uh, show, which will load actually all the files in this library that have a retention label. And it will show all the settings that are relevant for retention. So uh, it shows the label, uh, who it was applied and when it was applied. If it was an event-based label, which is a specific type of advanced uh, label, it will show the event date. Uh, this is very interesting for situations in which you want to uh, retain documents from a specific date, for example, uh, all personnel information from the date that he was fired, things like that. Um, you see the behavior that is that is relevant for this uh, for this file, and uh, and you see a couple of settings here. So as you can see, uh, we had a couple of documents that were labeled with a record retention label, um, and the behavior for that label is retain as record. And we have a couple of um, files that are labeled with a well the data lifecycle management label for which the behavior is do not retain. So this means that um, uh, this file can be deleted. That's what it means. So it's, it, 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 it will not be retained. If I try to delete this file, it, it, it won't work. It will give me a, an error. But if I try to delete this file, you can. So that, that's what this means, the behavior. And you can also see in the, in the table here that there's um, these, there are these specific um, check marks about what you can do with this file. This is basically just, uh, Applied retention information. What, so what, what can you do with a record? You cannot delete it. No, you cannot. Uh, you can update the metadata of this file. And this is actually a setting in purview. I can also disable it, which would mean that uh, a nice red cross would start showing here. It's a tenant white setting which we, with which you can say, well, if a record is applied, a record label is applied, you can still, or you can't, change metadata. Um, there's a a, a column about content updates. No, content updates are not allowed. And uh, label changes are allowed. This is really interesting, right? So as a, if I've got enough permissions, I will be able to change the label to a different kind of label. And then there's um, uh, another icon that says, is this record locked? Well, yes, it's locked as you can see, but you can also click this link and unlock it. So now you can see the, the icons will shift as you can see, the label update is now not allowed because an unlocked record cannot be changed. You need to relock it first. But the content update check mark is, is now uh, changed, has now been changed to a uh, to a uh, check mark. Like you can now update the content of this file. And this is just, I mean, the, I didn't really think the uh, I, I didn't really build this in like hard code of this. This is just information coming from the Microsoft Graph that tells me what can be done with this file in this current setup. I can also relock it, of course, and I can, if I want, clear the label. Now the label is gone on this file. So as you can see, this is the use case for this, um, for this uh, control. It's like, okay, I am a archival manager or a person working as a record manager in a company, and I want to be able to influence specific uh, documents in my SharePoint environment. I can cannot do so using the regular SharePoint controls because, well, we apply labels automatically and my controls are gone. Now, this tool will help you to see specific information on these files and change them if you like. Um, I can also, well, navigate back and forth, things like that, but I can also do some bulk actions. Now, I see my screen is a little bit too too small here, but I can, for example, take a bulk action and lock all records in this document library. And this can, for, well, it will show you a dialogue because it might take a while if you've got a big library. Um, 
But still, you can click yes, and it will start locking all the files in your library. Well, in my case, they were all locked. These, these are records. They are all locked. You can, of course, unlock them. And it will now go and unlock all these files, all these records in my library, and uh, give me back the result. This may take a little bit of a while. Uh, just like the previous speaker, by the way, I impl implemented batching in here. I will show, if I have time, I will show you in a minute. As you can see, all my records are now unlocked. And, uh, all the information has been changed and I can now work with these con this content and change it if I like. I can also bulk clear all labels if I like. So these are really um, uh, things that are that that uh, you can you can see how, how how you can use this to to uh, to work with labels across a library uh, and do things like for an entire library, for example. Maybe you've got a library with a lot of files hidden all in, in subfolders and People have unlocked certain records to uh, to work with it, and now you want to relock everything in one go. Well, you can use the bulk action method here and lock everything in one go, uh, which would be quite powerful. Uh, okay, so how much time do I have left? I don't think I have time left. Is it correct, uh, David? Uh, uh, yeah, I think we're about ready to wrap up, but yeah. Chris will handle so, that for us. Okay, so I'll wrap it up. So I don't really have time to show you a lot, uh, a lot of the code. So um, I think I'll just skip that then. Um, I do have a couple of uh, of resources here, and you can download. Always, you can download my latest release on my own GitHub page. Uh, there's a lot of information in there. Um, I will try to keep it uh, updated. I, I, I've got a lot of ideas about how to make this uh, even better. So, for example, how to uh, have some extra security controls to make uh, sure that only certain people can can use this control. Uh, for example, only people in a certain entry ID group. Uh, I've got a lot of ideas and I'm working with a lot of people who work with retention uh, to get this even better. So if you if you work if you started working with retention or you're interested in it, do contact me. I do also have a lot of blogs on my personal blog about retention. Um, do read up on that and let me know if you've got questions. I like the subject and um, I like to work with it. So back to you guys.